In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect Postgres to Grafana using Docker Compose. We're also going to spin up the data source from a configuration file like this. So when we run this application, what will happen is if we type in data sources, our Postgres connection will be right here. We can click into it. And this was all done through just configuration files. And then we can explore the data. And we'll also learn how to use configuration scripts or initialization scripts like this here to place data, which we can then use or then query inside Grafana. So for example, right here, if I just select all from extension, we run this, we get the return data here, which we also inserted using Docker Compose. So everything over here is done with Docker Compose. I'll show you how to get that done. So to begin, let's just start with our environment variables, which I'm gonna put in a file called .env. We will then use Docker Compose to load these environment variables into our containers. But so these are them right here. And note that the keys of most of these environment variables are required as they are used by the Grafana and Postgres images under the hood for configuration. So for example, GF security admin user right here sets the Grafana admin username. This one right here sets the password. This Postgres user is reserved to set the Postgres username. This of course sets the password and this creates or sets the default Postgres database name. So some of these environment variable names are reserved for the images. And now let's start, let's create our Postgres data source. I'm going to do this in a file called datasources.yaml. And the reason we can use these configuration files is because Grafana offers configuration through provisioning. And provisioning is when you push configuration into a Grafana instance with configuration files. So let's paste our code right into here. And what this will do is when we spin up our Grafana image, it will have a Postgres data source already set up. So Right here, we have the data source name. The type is Postgres. We have the URL to connect to, and these are environment variables. So these will be loaded from this env file. So then we also have our Postgres, or the database user's login username, which will be our Postgres user. We have our secure JSON data, which is, of course will contain the database password, which is another environment variable. And then we have some JSON data that we're providing for the data source. And we're gonna set the database name, another environment variable. Disable SSL, as this is just a demonstration, we're going to set some connection information. Most of these are just defaults. I just wanted to put here, put them here to show a little bit more what's going on. So max open connections, num max number of open connections, max number of idle connections, and so on. Then we have our Postgres version number, which I'm using Postgres version 16, which is going to be the image that we use. And the way you specify this in this data source file is as a number. So version 16 is going to be 1600. Version 9.3 would be 903, and so on. And then we have this other field called time scale DB, which we set to false. If you set it to true, true, Grafana will create some time series database, but we don't really need any of that for this demonstration. And next, let's create an initialization script, and this will populate our Postgres database with data. So we won't have to actually do anything. It'll just do it by default. And I'll go over, of course, how this works. But essentially, what this will do is when we run our images, or when we start our containers, a table called extension will be created in our DB called MyDB. And then we're going to insert a entry into extension, which is Witceptor, which is my Chrome extension, link in the description, and then just extension name and extension email. So essentially initialization scripts are files that are executed by Postgres when the container starts. And once again, I'll show you how to do that. But the way we're going to do that is with our Docker compose file, which is just going to be called docker compose.yaml. And I'm just going to paste everything in here again. So the first, we're just gonna set our project name to an environment variable called project name right here, which is just Postgres Grafana. Then we're gonna have our services. The first one's Grafana, and we always want to pull the image. We're not gonna be building it locally. We set the container name, load in our environment variable file, and then these volumes right here are very important. So this will place our data sources.yaml file, or this one with our Postgres information, into the location etc Grafana provisioning data sources and data sources.yaml. And essentially Grafana will look for configuration files in this provisioning directory for data sources. It'll look in the data source directory and then it will apply these configuration files. We also have this right here, which I've commented out, which is essentially used to persist data in a Grafana instance or in a Grafana container. And because this is a demonstration, I'm not gonna be doing that because I want it to run up fresh each time. But if you uncomment this, you will have data persistence. And then we have our port mappings and we want our Grafana container to start up when our database is healthy. And the way we specify this is we use the utility command pg is ready. 
and every five seconds, we're gonna check if Postgres is ready to accept connections, which is what this health check does. And if it is, then we will spin up our Grafana container. Here, we're gonna be pulling the Postgres image, which is version 16 Alpine. We set the container name, load environment variables, do the ports, and right here is an important line as this will run our initialization script. So any SQL or script files placed inside this location, Docker entry point, initdb.d, will be ran when the container is started up, unless there's already data in the container in this location, which can be done with Docker volumes. And that's another reason why I'm leaving this uncommented or commented out. So if you want to persist data in Postgres, uncomment this line here and you'll get data persistence. And I created these volumes right down here and they're also commented out. But all we have to do now is just run the program. So I'm gonna run docker compose up. We can see both of those are pulling and our Postgres container is started. And now our Grafana instance has started as well. And so let's see, everything's working fine. So what I'm gonna do is just pull open, pull it up over here and it'll run on localhost local 3000, which is what we set here. And now our username is gonna be wit code and our password is subscribe because they come from these environment variables and so now that we've logged in we should be able to just go to data sources and in here we can see our postgres data source and of course this came from this yaml file right here so we already have a data source set up because of grafana's provisioning so if we click into here we can see our environment variable substitution this of course doesn't look like a valid url but because it's dockerized it is so Docker will perform DNS on this stuff. Here's our database name, username, password, all that stuff. And we test the connection. Looks like we're good to go. So now what I want to do is click, might have to zoom in a bit, click on explore data over here. And what we can do now is let's run a query against this Postgres database to see if our initialization script worked. So we're gonna do select all from extension. And if we run this query, here's our result right here which came from our initialization script, which was this here. So we can see it's successfully been added. But that's all I wanted to show you in this video. If you like content like this, check out my courses, link in the description. Also download my Chrome extension, Witzapter, also in the description. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try and get back to you. Thank you for liking and subscribing, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.